Well, thank you so much for more watching Morning Live. Now, Kuzuli Natal's new premier, Sisle Zigalala, announced his cabinet yesterday. Former education MEC Mtandeni Dlungwane is out. The new education MEC is the ANC Youth League's provincial chairperson, Kwasim Shengu. And former education MEC Penny, uh, Pe Peging Konyeni has been appointed as Public Works and Human Settlements MEC. The former Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs MEC, Nomusa Dube Ngube, takes over the department of economic development and tourism and these are just some of the changes in the province of course the fate of Eteguini mayor Zandile Kumede still hangs in the balance and let's get uh, his say now that of Sitle Zigalala on some of these issues and the appointments as well and joining us now from our Durban studio I'm joined by the new KZN Premier Sitle Zigalala. Mr Zigalala good morning thanks for speaking to us and congratulations on your new appointment. Uh, thanks a lot and thanks for having us in your program and greetings to the viewers of the program. Now, uh, Mr. Zigalala, how difficult was it for you to decide on that cabinet, of course, with a few people swapping positions, some, of course, out of your cabinet altogether? And are you able to share some of the reasoning that you went through to come to these decisions? Well, firstly, uh, it was not so difficult to allocate once we knew who must be in. But what is uh, difficult was uh, to appoint only 10 people out of uh, the legislature constituted by 80 members with talent, skills and very uh, vast experience. So uh, it's always a challenge to pull the few from many people. And I don't believe in this regard when you select to do that to uh, isolate others or leave others out, but it's to strengthen the composition of the Executive Council. So what we considered was the question of ensuring that there is continuity uh, in a sense that uh, we uh, have more MECs who have been there, a number of MECs who have been there, or who have served before, who will come with the experience. Uh, the second consideration was to ensure that we have a number of women in the Executive Council as part of affirming uh, the struggle uh, for gender parity, but also the fight against the triple oppression of women suffered during the apartheid era. Then we had also to ensure that young people are given space to participate in the Executive Council. The uh, introduction of young people serves to ensure that going forward, we still we build the future leaders whilst we, we, we are there, uh, because you learn from those who have been there. Uh, I think those are the, the, third, the, the last part was to look on ensuring that our team is a composite that will work as a collective, hit the ground running and be able to make an impact within a short space of time. So there was, of course, and I suppose uh, to be expected naturally, some reaction negatively so from uh, opposition parties. And one of the criticisms was, um, although there was praise for you appointing young people to your cabinet, there was concern about whether they would be up to the task. Uh, the education portfolio, for example, yours is one of the biggest education departments in the country. And there was concern that perhaps appointing someone who's relatively inexperienced to that portfolio could actually exacerbate some of the problems you face? Well, I, would, I wonder what we talk about when we say someone is inexperienced because these are members of the ANC uh, who have served in key position. For instance, the new MEC for Education he has been in the administration as one of the senior managers of a uh, government. And we believe that he has a clear vision uh, around issues of education, uh, not only education at a primary and secondary level, but also uh, linking it with skills development, because we have emphasized the point that the education system must also embrace the, the technical skills development, because it's helpful, yes, to 
uh, uh, study theoretically, but it's important also to balance with skills. I believe that M.E. Simsheng will be able to lead the department and will succeed because he has been uh, around and he has been in the administration of the government. And then uh, also another concern is around the Department of Health, the appointment there. And it said that you had a medical doctor heading up, the, up that portfolio previously and it didn't uh, really go well because there were many problems. And of course now bringing in someone who doesn't have a medical background to boot, do you have uh, the confidence that the person you've appointed will be able to steer this department in the correct direction? We have a full confidence because you don't need to be a technician or a specialist uh, in that particular field to provide strategic leadership. For MEC Nomakukus Melane Zulu, her task will be to ensure that she provides strategic leadership, ensure that uh, whatever is the policy and whatever are the, whatever are the interventions of the ANC Galet government are implemented. And I think in this regard, we'll want to thank various medical uh, associations and formations for their support and their wise counsel uh, uh, in this sector because they've been uh, up and giving us some input on how we should be able to approach the issue of ensuring that we stabilize the medical sector uh, in this province. Um, Premier Zigalala, yesterday uh, your inauguration was held at your residence, the official residence of the Premier, and uh, with only around 200 guests. And many people applauded that effort, saying that in these hard economic times, it's good to see that you are cognizant of that and uh, taking the necessary austerity measures. But is this a flash in the pan or do you have any other concrete measures that you will be embarking on in order to make sure that you actually save money in the province? Yes, the first is not the yesterday's one. The first one was uh, the decision of the president to ensure that it does not increase salaries of ministers, MECs and premiers uh, for this financial year. And I think it is a good leadership uh, which must be followed and uh, uh, emulated. When yesterday we took a decision to have an inauguration which uh, is less of a size and not spending a lot, it took a, 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 a cue from that leadership. We will be going down to ensure that everything we do is done within uh, the understanding that we need to spend a lot of money on the programs, especially programs that seek to impact on the lives of the people. Spend less money in workshops and in flying and in spending on things that we could manage uh, to do without. And we must spend more resources of the state on the people, on the de development of the people, and in meeting the priorities that we've set for ourselves. And then, of course, uh, the optics coming out of your inauguration ceremony yesterday, uh, most notably former President Jacob Zuma, who missed the presidential inauguration on Saturday. He was at your inauguration, um, as were other people uh, like uh, the former Minister of Police, Peggy Tele. He was there, also former Minister of Transport, Spoon Debele. Uh, you also had uh, former chairman of the SABC of ESCOM and others, uh, Mr. Dr. Ben Ngubane. And, you know, so that raised a few eyebrows and people saying, especially on the Zuma attendance, that um, the perception is created that you are, of course, um, a Zuma man and that KZN could be used as a launch pad for the fight back against the current administration. How do you respond to that? Well, uh, I think we must understand why former president was there. He was there because he has served as the former president. Uh, as a MEC, but also given that he's a former president, he do a number of things and projects where he is helping on developing people. So that, he, that's why he was there. But I think we must still dissuade ourselves from this perception that if you are seen with the former president, you are against the current president. And we must try to understand whether 
there is anything that former president is doing to build a base for himself. Because I don't believe that perception is genuine. I don't believe so. Uh, in the media and from political analysis, an analyst, if you are seen with President Cyril Ramaphosa, people will say, no, you have dumped former President Zuma, you, have, you are now with President Cyril Ramaphosa. Whilst the reality is that we must support and work with the current leadership. But the leadership that has been there before, it doesn't mean that they have no role anymore. It doesn't mean that they must disappear from the society. In fact, they have to continue supporting the current government, both nationally, provincially, and in all other tasks that they will be assigned, either by uh, the ANC or the government. You are talking about uh, Dr. Ngubane. Dr. Ngubane was not just there as the former chair of SAPC, but was there as a former premier of this province. You'll remember that at some point Dr. Ngubane was a premier in Guazulu Natal. So moving on from that, and um, so glad you uh, point to the issue of perceptions because you and I both know that perceptions are all powerful in politics. There's also the question of uh, the executive mayor of Eteguini, Zandile Kumete, and uh, the concern around uh, how she should be dealt with by yourself as the premier and, of course, the party at large. Uh, uh, but we do not want to blur the lines. Let's stick to your role as the premier. How are you going to deal with uh, some of uh, the people like Zandile Kumete who have been flagged, who have been fingered in impropriety, uh, especially given that your um, administration would seek to be one that is free of any sort of cloud hanging over it, especially from the onset? Well, I think that issue is better handled from the ANC point of view, and I know that the ANC is dealing with it and sooner the ANC will be able to address as what the ANC will do in relation to that matter because we must be seen acting decisively on issues and allegations of corruption but without also condemning people as if they have been found guilty. There is a process that is ensuing uh, which is led by the leadership of the ANC which I'm part of and I'm participating in that process and we will ensure that we deal with this matter. And but finally, one of the things that of the thing that thing that we mentioned that we are going to be doing is to ensure that we help intervene in strengthening the working relationship with all municipalities. We we'll want to ensure that municipalities respond to the needs of the people and respond with a great sense of agency. We will be working with each and every municipality in Guazulu Natal, helping on challenges, helping in driving the program of social and economic transformation. And just a final one, the political killings in your province. Have you uh, paid some mind, some attention as to how you are going to deal with this as the head of the province? Yes, one of the things we will be doing is to ensure a full implementation of the recommendations that emerge from uh, the Muerane Commission, which examine the causal factors of political killings. The second step is to ensure that we work with the Minister of Police and the national government as well as the national task team that investigate these cases so that these cases are investigated proper and there are arrest and prosecution and such prosecution take place within a reasonable time and that must be with a, a, a speed. But also we must also ensure that people who are coming up with information as witnesses are protected. So we are going to go all out to ensure that we support this national task team. We are also going to ensure that we encourage people to come up and assist where they know what happened so that we deal with this matter, not only at a level of political killings, but killings in all areas, in areas of, in the area of politics, in tensions between communities. Uh, we would want to create a peaceful and a stable KwaZulu Natal, which uh, is going to admire and attract the whole continent and the world 
in terms of ensuring that it becomes a destination of choice for tourists but also for investors. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, KwaZulu Natal Premier Sisle Zigalala, talking to us about his new cabinet and matters related to the province. And with that, it's time for the latest news with Leanne.